Hello, my name is Wayne Hoy. I am a Solution Manager, and welcome to another video in our tutorial series about how to do foundational things in Viz Your People. In this video, we are going to start to cover a very important topic, and that is how to get data into Viz Your People. And in particular, we are going to cover one method, which is the direct file upload method. Today, we'll do a quick overview of that method, and then we'll see it in action by navigating to Studio, uploading a file, generating a new data version, and then validating the results of our work. So there are a number of different ways to get data into Visual People. You can use SFTP. We have some pre-built data connectors to specific systems, as well as an API. But today we're talking about direct file upload via Studio, which is the administrator's user interface. And this method is really good for testing the results of some customization work that you may have done in Studio. So, if you have extended our data model by adding additional properties and dimensions, or perhaps you have added to the data model by modeling something brand new uh, that was not included in our blueprint, direct file upload is a really good method to test results of your work. The customization workflows of extending objects and creating brand new ones, those will be covered in other videos in this tutorial series, so make sure you check those out as well. So let's get started and upload a file into Studio. So the very first step before uploading data into Vizier is to make sure your files are in the right format. As a Vizier People customer, you have access to the Vizier community here on ServiceNow. And in particular, this article, Vizier People Data Dictionaries, contains the data dictionaries, which describe the formats and files expected for all of the solutions that you have purchased. Let's click in the one as an example. It will be an Excel file and each tab will describe a particular file that you can upload. And within each tab is the list of expected fields or columns, a description of that column so that you can map it to the data in your source systems that should populate it, as well as some examples, the level of optionality and the data type. Also in service now is a data guidelines article that you should review, which talks about some of the more generally applicable guidelines about the file, such as the separators it should use, date formats, and those sorts of things. This may seem very daunting, but never forget that as a Vizier customer, you have access to our group of onboarding specialists that can help you along with this journey. All right, so now let's actually upload a file and generate a new data version so that we can analyze it. I'm back here in Vizier People, the analytics experience. To upload a file, we need to go to the Studio experience. So let's pull open the left side navigation. Scroll on down to Studio. Studio is the administrator's user experience so that administrative users can make changes and test them out and publish them for end users to see. To upload a file, we will go to the Data tab. Then we will go to the Data Transfers sub tab. And to upload our file, we simply click the Upload File button here on the right. We choose the file we want to upload, and I've already prepared a CSV file for the employee records, following the guidelines and the format that we saw earlier from the data dictionaries in the Vizier community. So we'll upload that file into the system. As the system receives the file, it will also do some pre-processing on it, checking it for formats and data types, and it will let us know if there are any problems with the file. So now the file has been received. If there were some issues with the file we provided, it was in the wrong format or was missing some mandatory columns or had some columns that it couldn't figure out what it was supposed to be, the system would indicate that the errors uh, existed here and we could click into it, review the errors, correct our, format, our file format, and re-upload and try again. But in this case, it received and processed correctly so we can move on to the next step, which is to generate a new data version. And the best way to do that is to go to Projects. Now let's take a quick aside to talk about projects in Studio and, and what they're all about. Projects are the built-in version control system to allow administrative users like us to make some changes, test them out, validate them before releasing them to production and affecting all of our end users. So to create a new project, we go to the project screen, we click create a new project, we give it a name and click create. I've actually already created a project for this data upload job because there was something else I wanted to show you in there. So we will open up this existing project, and now we will brought into the Studio project screen. 
You can always get back to the screen by clicking the home icon here on the left side navigation. And the most important part of a project is probably the list of changes that it includes. And we can get to there by clicking the changes item uh, in the tab bar. Now, I've already created a change in this project so that we can see what it looks like. But if you're working on a large project, customizing many things, uh, adding some new objects, your list of changes might get really long. You can always review the list of changes that you have made in this project to make sure that when you publish it to your end users, it contains the changes that you intended and only the changes that you intended. Uh, like I said, I've already updated a change here so that we can see what it looks like. If we highlight that change and go to the view diff button all the way on the right, this is how we would review our project change by change to make sure that the changes we're about to publish to our end users is what we intended. And now I made a very sort of nonsensical change to this formula by adding a constant number 2.7 to the comp ratio. So that really doesn't make a lot of sense. But this is to show how you might review your project change by change before you release it out into the wild. Now, like I said, this change is kind of nonsense and I don't really want it. If there's a change that I don't want to publish, I can always click the change that I don't want click delete and now we're back to a clean project once again so coming back to data loading now we're ready uh, to generate a new job and the easiest way to do so is still within the project homepage itself if we go to the dashboards we can see the data version that is currently live in production or being used by this project if we click the view data versions button we will see a list of data generation jobs one of these jobs represents the main data generation job for you know, employee files, starts, exits, that sort of a thing. And the easiest way to, to generate a new job is really just to hit the pull down and click run a job. So we see a bit of a status here on the left about the progress of the job. But if we want to see more detail about the job's progress, we click open the data item on the left side navigation and go to the jobs tab and this will list all of our jobs that have occurred. Uh, and we can always filter by time, by uh, success criteria, those sorts of things, status. And this is our job that is currently in progress. So we'll wait, wait for this job to complete. We'll be notified by email when it does. Okay, so it has been about 10 minutes. And as you can see, our job is now complete. We can click into the job and see a little bit more detail about it. But the most important part of this screen is the data version number. This is the unique number that identifies uh, the database that reflects all of the data that we've uploaded, including that new file. We're going to want to remember that number, 7000083. What we need to do is to make sure that our project is using that data version so, so that when we try to do some analysis on it, we're actually seeing the data that we had just uploaded or data that reflects the data that we have just uploaded. What we want to do is come into here, edit the data version for that main job and just go ahead and say 8.3. We can update. Now, we've run a job, we've got a new data version number, we've configured this project to use the new data version number, and what we can do now is preview the solution. So we can preview, that will take us back into analysis, but not the production version of uh, the analysis user experience, but a, a version of the user experience that reflects this data version that we've just generated. Back in analysis, if we look up to the top of the window, we can see this extra bar now that wasn't there before. This lets us know that we are previewing analysis as it would be for end users uh, once this project gets published. So that's how we differentiate between previewing a project versus the actual production environment. Now, if what we've uploaded is additional data based on the existing blueprint data model that comes with Vizier People. Vizier People comes with a set of handy data validation guides. So pre-built analyses with pre-built visualizations to help us look for problems in the files that we've uploaded. Uh, we would look for things like large spikes or big troughs in things like headcount or pay. We would look for large groups of unknown values, that sort of a thing. So if you are uploading data that is part of the Visitor People Blueprint, you can use these validation guides to make sure uh, that we are visualizing data that reflects the data that you have uploaded. If you have customized Visitor People, such as adding your own new attributes, 
creating new metrics, or even creating entirely new data models, you'll want to create your own data uh, validation analysis in the same way that we saw in a preview, previous video, uh, building out new visualizations in the Explore Room, capturing them and adding them to analysis that you can use for validation purposes. Now, once we've validated our data and we're happy that everything loaded and was configured correctly, we can go back into Studio, back into our projects, and start to publish this project to our, our end users. And the way to do that is first to go back into Changes, click all of the changes uh, that we want to preserve, uh, commit them to a version and give that version a name. And once those changes are committed, we can then submit for approval or directly release it to production if our user account has sufficient privileges to do so. Uh, a lot of, in a lot of cases, you'll want to break up uh, this process so that one user has to submit for approval and a different user has to release to production just as a control mechanism so that we don't affect end users uh, by accident. So, but at the end of that process, once you release production, production will be updated with this new data version and all the other changes that were included in this project. And that's how you upload data and even execute configuration changes to these are people for your production environment and your end users. So let's wrap up. We've looked at how to directly upload a file into visitor people, how to generate a new data version inside a project, and how to publish that project to update the production system for all of your end users. I want to thank you very much for participating in this video. In subsequent videos, we're going to look at some other different ways to upload data into visitor people, and we're also going to look into some other different ways to customize visitor people, extending the data model, adding your own objects, et cetera, that you would do in the project environment that you saw in this video. So we'll see you soon in those other videos.